welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where dishonesty is sometimes the best policy. On David Mitchell's team tonight, she's the queen of the Strictly Ballroom and the Traitor's Castle. It's Claudia Winkleman. Yeah. And comedian and star of Gogglebox and I'm a Celebrity, it's Babatundi Aleshe. Yeah. And on Lee Mack's team tonight, cult podcaster and stand-up comic, it's Mike Bubbins. <laughs> and uh, she's a comedy writer and actor from some of our best-loved sitcoms, it's Jessica Knappett. <laughs> we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction, and Claudia is up first. OK. <laughs> For one episode of The Traitors, I gave myself a fake tan using gravy granules. <laughs> Please, team. <laughs> wow. Mm. OK. Do you have a normal fake tan? I didn't have it there, because I was in the castle, so what I thought was, let's... Use something. Was there a brand or a type of gravy? I don't think I'm allowed to say a brand, but yeah. Well, because you can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> was it early on in the record? Was it the first episode? It was not the first episode. It was, I don't know, like Ep5, right, round well, table, fine. in you go. You know what I mean. You're wearing tweed. What do you need? <laughs> Correct. Granules. <laughs> what about the first four episodes? The first four episodes, uh, it was quite sunny. Uh, no, really. no, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't sunny. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for the first four episodes? This is very good. I had a spray. Right. Like, I don't know why you're, like, so obsessed right. with detail. So this is the question. <laughs> it's so suffocating. Spray, like, the... be cool, be yeah. cool. Go with the wind. You know, I if... went up, traitors, gravy granules, move on. <laughs> if you're ever up for a crime, never talk like this in court. Yeah. <laughs> You said where the gravy granules came from. Yeah, a shop. <laughs> well, but, but, oh, weren't you in the middle of nowhere, weren't you, up there? Yes, but there are shops there. Oh, 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 this story's getting worse. So you realise you haven't got any stuff, <laughs> and you go, someone rush out and quickly and get me, sir. We'll get you the stuff you usually... No, 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 no. <laughs> Just for no reason whatsoever, <laughs> don't rush out and get the stuff I usually use. Get gravy granules just on the off chance it's good. Surely that story works if you happen to have them on you. Oh. You're not going out for them. Everyone stop speaking. <laughs> there you go. Look, look what you're doing now with your hair. Why didn't you just do that on the show instead? <laughs> what do you think, Jessica? Does this strike you as, as true? Yes. I mean, whatever you think. <laughs> If this is true, oh. I will never believe anything anyone says ever again. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Is it true? I'd love to believe it. I think it's probably untrue, though. Makes it easy for you, Lee. It's just all hinges on the one thing. You need to rush out, please, and get me some gravy granules, was the bit where it yeah. faltered. Mm. <laughs> and everything else you said. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it's a lie? 100 per cent. OK, they quite conclusively think it's a lie. Was it a lie or were you actually telling the truth? It is true. No! No! no. no. This is insane! <laughs> it's very good. It really works. Yes, it's true. Claudia did give herself a fake tan using gravy. Jessica, you're up next. I hated my boyfriend's moustache so much, I got him drunk one night, then shaved it off while he slept. Mike, I'm so wow. sorry. <laughs> wow. David Steve. So, uh, when was this? Um, it was about, well, 15 years ago. And are you still together? No. <laughs> What kind of moustache did he have? Was it the one that curls up or was it, like, his...? The problem I had with it was that it wasn't a proper moustache. Oh. 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 If I may say, it was almost as if we were competing. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> was it a dry shave or did you try and, like, put a little bit of water or...? I think she's pushing her look if she's going to lather him up. <laughs> Anything for the weekend, sir? <laughs> um, 
he was quite a heavy sleeper. Right. <laughs> so... Why did he decide to grow it? Because he thought it looked cool and manly. He's right. He is right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's moustache is a thing to be looked yeah, at in yeah. awe. Would well, you have been happy with that? Yeah. That's a proper moustache. Thank you. That's a sort of That's New York Police can... Department yeah. moustache, isn't it? <laughs> you can get a grip on that one. So, <laughs> so um, Jessica, you do the deed uh, in the night time. Yeah. And how did he react when he woke up and how quickly did he notice it? Um, it took... It did actually take him quite a while. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> By he which wasn't... point it had grown back, so <laughs> no harm done. I said that if you shave things, because with women's legs... If you shave them, actually, the theory goes that three hairs grow back in the place of one. That's not true. Well, that can't be true, otherwise you'd true. have legs like an ape. <laughs> what was this guy's name? What was his full name? <laughs> he was called James. What were his good qualities? I mean, you... you, you <laughs> yes, we, we, we do can't help wondering what it was that drew you to James in the first place. <laughs> well, uh, when we first met, it was more of a sort of... Proximity thing, really. <laughs> oh, <geez>. well, <laughs> Is that it? Have you well, thought of writing for Clinton cards? It's beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes when you're working with people, you know, yeah. it, work crushes can just emerge out of scarcity, really, more than yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wow. what do we think? Um, Babatundi, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's a lie. I'm not convinced by how she uh, explained the story. I've, I'm, if I'm honest, I've stopped even considering that it might be a lie. I <laughs> you think it's true? Completely drawn in. What do you think? I think it might be true. true. I think true. Lie. lie. I think true. All right. They think it's true. Jessica, was it true or was that all a lie? It is a lie. Oh! Oh! Yes, it's a lie. Jessica didn't shave off her boyfriend's moustache. Ah. <laughs> Mike, you're next. Blimey. Right. I once went on an eight-hour round trip to Wimbledon, but never got to see any tennis. Were you going to the football club? Uh, no, the uh, All England Club. Um, it was in the middle of the summer. I was at school at the time. I was a young, about 14 years of age. And our PE teacher took us to Wimbledon. I know you're Welsh. So yes. Whereabouts did you travel from? This is from Barry. Rob, from you'll be Barry, right? Familiar with? Yeah. Um, in a minibus. School trip. Wasn't really. It was like an ad hoc school trip. <laughs> so this was the eighties. <laughs> so the, the teacher... oh, the age of the ad yeah. hoc school trip. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was a different time. The past is a foreign country, isn't it? In many ways. Well, it's yeah. Wales. Yeah, quite. <laughs> so he said to us, the rugby team, the day before. Would you like to go to Wimbledon to see the tennis? And this was the sort of McEnroe era. We said, that'd be great, sir, yeah? He you said, cannot well, be serious. We'll go tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it'd be a nice idea to go to Wimbledon to see John McEnroe play on centre court. We said, yes, please. OK. Well, he just thought you guys could turn up and see John McEnroe. Well, this is the thing. He hadn't factored that in. So <laughs> we get to Wimbledon. He parked outside for probably 45 minutes and left us in the bus. And then he came back about 45 minutes later, uh, looking crestfallen. <laughs> <laughs> and just said, uh, they're sold out. <laughs> so what happened then? Well, we were similarly crestfallen, so we turned the bus around, <laughs> started driving back to Barry. You just went home? Yeah, straight around. <laughs> we stopped the first services just outside Reading. Um, it's not a good one. He gave us <laughs> some our money back for the tickets <laughs> to go and play on the Space Invaders in the services. Mm -hmm. Said so he got half an hour. Uh, we got back on the bus. So we get the next services. He had to get out and get some diesel for the minibus. He didn't get that at the previous services at the same time. <laughs> as He's not I great at forward the... thinking, is he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he could see we were disappointed on the second services. You've got to make this is a pre-internet age. We had no phones. No phones. <laughs> yeah. No internet. No. Yeah. Um, so he bought us all an adult magazine. What? what? <laughs> bought us an adult magazine. <laughs> yeah, one each. Uh, what? Uh, well, I don't want to know what happens next. <laughs> and what was his attitude as he was handing out the literature? 
Yeah. It's just uh, sorry what today, lads. I've let you down. Just give us one image. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's been an awful day, so, look, I hope this goes some way to making up for the disappointment. Yeah. There we are, Mitchell, that's for you. How many, how many students? Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. I remember adult magazines in the shops. They never had fifteen copies, bro. <laughs> Did you take these magazines home? Yeah, under my shirt, straight upstairs. <laughs> What do you yeah. think? I know, Babatundi, you're uncomfortable with the number of magazines that it's possible to buy. <laughs> no, for some unknown reason, I, I believe it. I, I think it's true. You believe it? I do. It can't possibly be true, but somehow, maybe. So what's it going to be? Yeah. Well, true or lie, I reckon. We'll That's right. <laughs> We're going to say true. We're going to say true. So, Mike, was it true or were you telling a lie? It was... True. <laughs> wow, it's true. Mike didn't see any tennis after an eight-hour trip to Wimbledon. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Darren. <laughs> So, Jessica, what is Darren to you? Well, this is Darren, and I went to his wedding dressed as Princess Leia because I had been tricked into believing it was fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how do you know Darren? This is Darren, and he beat me to the title of Best Welsh Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> right. And finally, Lee, what is your relationship with Darren? This is Darren. He was going to take me up in his plane, but before we got off the runway, I accidentally set off his ejector seat. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Jessica's fancy dress friend, Mike's enemy Elvis, or Lee's propelled pilot. David's team, where will you begin? Uh, so, uh, Jessica, mm. how come you thought it was a fancy dress wedding? Well, um, Darren, I know to be a Star Wars fan. So you just assumed his <laughs> wedding would be Star Wars themed? If you'll let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> the wedding was on May the 4th. Ah, of course. <laughs> International Star Wars Day. Mm -hmm. And how do you know him? What's the relationship with Darren? He's... I am her father. <laughs> um, he's my old drama teacher. OK. Even if... You thought it was May the 4th, and he's mad for Star Wars. I think you'd think maybe the bride. <laughs> oh, they, yeah. Like, I don't so think you'd leave, wear white. You leave Princess Leia for the bride. Yeah. Yeah, you'd go C-3PO or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with her legs, Chewbacca. <laughs> How come you get invited to the wedding? I don't think I've ever been invited to the weddings of any ex Teachers. We were hit the first class of drama that he ever taught, and so he did stay in touch with us. Also, you know, it's not every day one of your pupils becomes a famous celebrity who's on telly. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, was, they... was there someone else there then? <laughs> that <didn't... laughs> Description. So, who was it who told you that it was a fancy dress wedding? I was tricked into believing. By whom? How? Yeah. It was the friendship group. And it was on a sort of email chain. It was boring, boring emails, whatever. Yeah, haha, -ha, May the 4th. Oh, there were some jokes going round okay. about is it Star Wars, is it not? And I didn't see the is it not bit. Oh, so you weren't deliberately tricked? Well, that was what initially happened. And then they saw my um, taking it at face value and they decided that would be funny, wouldn't it, if we let Jess believe. And what was the, how did you achieve the Princess Leia look? Well, you know, your standard Classic. couple of buns on the side. <laughs> and then, yeah, it was a white gown and a belt, cos I just... Yeah. And that was what obviously made it all the more embarrassing. I think that's very presumptuous. <laughs> there are other Princess Leia outfits you could have gone what, for. I should have turned up in the gold bikini, should I, David? <laughs> I was thinking, that was, that was you want, fatigues. David? Exactly, the fatigues on Endor. That would be... That'd be just... Yes, too cash. Yeah, that would be fine. Too cash. You know. Who did Darren marry? 
I think she's called Melanie. <laughs> Wow. Awkward. Well, it wasn't really about... We weren't there for Melanie, we were there for Darren. No, no clearly Melanie. not. You did Melanie everything you could to upstage yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> and how did she react when she saw another beautiful woman stood in white? Honestly, she didn't <laughs> seem to notice and nobody said anything. I was just horrified. But I just had to take my buns down and just get on with the day. So I've got that embroidered above my bed. <laughs> Once you'd unhook the Danish pastries, basically you were just in a white dress with, what, <laughs> one laser gun. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I didn't realise that you, of all people, would have this encyclopedia Endor. Endor! I mean, laser yeah. guns. Are you a big Star Wars well, fan? Do you know, I've seen some of the films. <laughs> OK, no, so, hang on a minute. Most people wouldn't be able to say Endor, which is, of course, the foresty planet from Star Rob, Wars. Rob, it's not a planet, it's a forest moon. Yeah, everyone... Yeah. It's a forest moon. <laughs> The forest moon of Endor. What's this very sandy planet with the twin moons? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> David, what is the name of the sandy <laughs> planet bully, with twin he? moons? Yeah. He's a bully. He's, he's what is it? Yeah, it's, I think it's called Tatooine. Yes! <laughs> well done. I'm, I'm fine. I don't like this. <laughs> right, who would you like to quiz next? OK, uh, Mike. You're an Elvis impersonator, are you? I was an Elvis tribute artist, yeah. Sorry, tribute artist. Yeah. I'm not suggesting you were trying to get into his ices or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> could, could you give us a little burst of yeah. Elvis? Yeah, what do you want me to sing? I don't know any of the songs. Yeah. Um, sure. You don't know any of no, the I'm, songs. I'm more into Star Wars. <laughs> I'm being told that we have issues yeah, we can't afford with it. copyright and not oh, all that. Right. If he sings, it's oh, easy. Yeah. Oh, they, they want a little less conversation well, about you... Elvis. <laughs> In which case, for the copyright reason, just do something that the BBC does have the rights to, say, the tune to Ski Sunday, but like <laughs> Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> did you say that you won or Darren won? Darren won. He became the best Welsh Elvis, yeah. And where did you come in the competition? I didn't place. I, I, I was outside the top three. It was controversial in my eyes. How, <laughs> how many were competing in there? Oh, probably 20 or 30. Yeah. Okay. And who was judging this? Uh, people who judge at the uh, <laughs> at the best Welsh Elvis competition. You're in. And yeah. in. Well, Porthcawl, you know this, right? Porthcawl is the home of the world's largest Elvis festival. This is true. They have a festival in Porthcawl for Elvis every year. It's the world's largest, and there are between twenty and thirty. No, no, no. <laughs> They're separate competitions. Oh, I see. How long ago was this? I'm going to say 12 years ago. <laughs> 12 years. Paint a picture of Porthcawl Elvis Festival. What sort of people would you say it attracts? Elvis fans and people who are married to Elvis fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's essentially that, yeah. Are you an Elvis fan or was this because of the physical resemblance? Is that why you, you went into it? So I went to Graceland when I was 19. Right. Didn't really grasp pre-internet how big America was or where Graceland was. Well, you know it's far from Barry. It's the half Barry. I went to New York, you see, and they got the train to Graceland. Long took, way. Took two and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then when you got there, it was full. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now, Lee came up with something yes. very plausible. Uh, Just remind us. <laughs> uh, this is Darren, and he took me up in his plane. Well, he tried to, but we never got off the runway because I accidentally pressed his ejector seat. Uh, OK, how do you know Darren? Well, Darren's a friend of a friend. We were, in a, we were in a bar, I think, years ago, and I just got to know him. He was on the fringes of my friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got to find out that he was in uh, the RAF. And he also did... Uh, Rides. He also did... <laughs> and he also does the displays, you know, like the red arrows, that mm. type of thing. Yeah. So did you promote him from the fringes of the friendship when you found out? How that... do you do that without moving your lips? <laughs> <laughs> such an interest, cos this is your drama teacher. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. See what you might go wrong with. <laughs> you 
you said you set off his ejector seat. I mean, paint a picture for us. What right, happened? so I'm not keen on flying. Mm. I really don't like flying. So he said, uh, if, if you're a nervous flyer, I can help you overcome this by taking you on a trip uh, in my tornado. It's a gentler ride, isn't it? In yeah, a, in if a you're scared air. of flying. <laughs> So, so was this out of panic that you pressed these ejectors? No, I think it was an accident that I pressed the okay. ejector seat. It's basically two seats, one in the front and one directly behind. Oh, yes. Right. To be clear, his ejector seat for yes. his yes. isn't near him. No. You've got to Listen. climb over the back no. and press the button. Listen, and then Claudia, go back into I, your seat. I was exactly the same as you when mm. I was naive and silly, but actually... <laughs> Not even silly about tornadoes. Right. Not about life. No. You've yeah. clearly got your act together. You're putting gravy on your face. <laughs> <laughs> There's a seat there, a seat here. He's got an ejector seat. Oh. I have an ejector seat. Mm -hmm. But also, in case the man at the front passes out or I pass out, oh. he has the double seat one and I have the double seat one. And he said, now this takeoff is like the G Force thing. Yeah. Oh. So make sure you're properly ready for this. I was so terrified, I went into the crash position. And then saw these handles, I thought, I'll hold them. Uh, uh, and I thought, this is ridiculous. And as I looked up, I must have pulled them out. <laughs> and I was nervous to begin with, but when I looked up and saw that he wasn't even sat there, I was terrified. <laughs> Are you telling us he went out of the aeroplane? No, he shot straight down. What do you think? <laughs> it goes very high up, yeah. parachute goes off, and he glides back down. And he landed right in the canteen and he had his lunch. <laughs> Hang on, OK. <laughs> Each seat has a handle for itself and a handle for both seats to eject. Is that correct? Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, that's that's, well, what, that's you what you said. said. But you didn't say there was a handle that allows the person in the second seat to eject only the person yes. in the first seat and not themselves. Yeah. Because uh, under what circumstances would that be helpful? Well, he did say <laughs> if the person in the front passed out. out. Yes. Yeah, well, why do you want them to go it? on? They, <laughs> you go to hospital and I'll carry on flying. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and what happens next? I managed to uh, scramble into the front seat. <laughs> do that. <laughs> Stay, stayed calm. And just said, Roger, Roger, Wilco, Wilco. Uh, <laughs> The uh, pilot has ejected. Uh, permission to stop the plane. So, yeah, I managed to bring the plane to a halt. Uh, climbed out, slid down the wing, landed <laughs> like that. <laughs> Kissed a young lady. And, uh, walked away to some music from Berlin. <laughs> right. We need an answer. So, David's yeah. team is Darren, Jessica's fancy dress friend, Mike's <laughs> enemy Elvis, <laughs> or Lee's propelled pilot? Yes. <laughs> That's the one. It's the third one, isn't it? The Lee's story, I mean, it was very, very unlikely to start with. Yes. But the way he describes it has rendered it impossible. <laughs> uh, well, so I think we can correct. rule that out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> forgot that Darren was supposed to be <laughs> her drama teacher entirely but... and became <laughs> fascinated by his career in the RAF. <laughs> So, I, by a process of elimination, Darren <laughs> must Elvis. be Elvis. Mike's friend, the fellow Elvis impersonator. Yeah. You're saying it's Mike. Everybody is on Once the edge he... of their seat. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't when he was flying with me. <laughs> Darren, would you please reveal your true identity? My name's Darren, and I beat Mike in the best Welsh <laughs> outfit. <laughs> yes, and... We've got an opportunity now to, to put their wow. Elvis abilities yes. to the test. Can I just say, before you hand them over, do not pull both of them at the same time, otherwise you'll go through the roof. That's for you, Dan. That's you. Now, we're going to need some music. Enemy Elvis, thank you very much, Darren. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Scrubby Man. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... It's a Babatundi. All right. I've had to up security at my gigs because old women won't stop kissing me. Ooh. Beastie, how old are these women? I would suggest maybe, like, 60 upwards. And what kind of Whoa, kisses... whoa, whoa, sorry, you're saying that's old? <laughs> Don't yeah. listen to him, Rob. <laughs> um, what kind of kisses are they going in for? They're going for a smooch on the cheek. And Some okay. might try and get one on the lips, but that's... It's like, no... And are they trying to get on the stage, or is this at the back? No, 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 this is at the meet and greet, so I do meet and greets at do some you? of the... Yeah, yeah, at some of the smaller charge venues. charge extra for that? Uh, no. Could be. I mean, I could, <laughs> but I don't want to, you know what I mean? It's not that <laughs> kind of meat. Do, do, do you not like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting he's offering himself as a gigolo. <laughs> You should talk with Claudia, you could do meat and gravy. <laughs> so, how bad does it get? I mean, obviously... It gets bad. Are we talking a bit of hand-grabbing as well? Yes. And are we right. talking a bit yeah. of, like, when the photo happens, arm round, bit of a squeeze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, I've had that, I've yeah. had that. And I've they had... say, get off. Is there no, a... no, no, no. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've had, I've had um, a couple, husband, wife, and I've had, like, while we're taking a picture, I've had the wife's hand on my bum. <gasps> Squeezing it? Yes. Full on. And I'm like, in the picture, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> what are we thinking? Was Baba Tundi telling the truth? I think he's got that an approachable way about him. And especially on the, you know, I'm a celebrity, they share everything. Exactly. Yeah. So they feel like they know him. I think it's true. I think it's, I think think it's, it's true. a lie, actually. And I think he's just showing off. <laughs> I'll go with you. I'll yeah, say you're true. You're saying true. Yeah. All right, they think it's true, Babatundi. Was it true or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Babatundi has up security because of his new fan base. And that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that David's team have three points and Lee's team have two. <laughs> oh, oh. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.